for us to worship the name of the Lord and I want you to close your eyes and lift up your voice and begin to speak in the language of the spirit and Bible said in Romans chapter 12 that I beseech you brethren that you offer yourself as a living sacrifice before the name of the Lord for this is the true worship Paul is saying to us is beseech us by the message of the Lord that we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice before God for this is the true worship will you lift up your hands before God this moment and begin to speak in the language of the spirit begin to offer yourself as a living sacrifice this moment oh God the Bible said God is a spirit and anyone that worships him must worship in the spirit and in the truth will you lift up your voice and honor God this moment let your spirit be informed will you lift up your hands before God and begin to offer yourself as a living sacrifice before God this moment God is here He is ready to take up your friend He is ready to accept your living sacrifice I ask Offer him the fruit of your lips hey. Offer him the my God Hey Offer him the fruit of your lips and I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Will you lift up your hand before you? As long.
Kaliata. I want to hear you. As long as I am breathing, Masukata. I will always. Igbele, salele na mano. Living sacred. Offer your heart, not just your lips. Offer your heart before it is.
and I will for the last time I say I will I, I will, will worship your Lord for the all my life be the reason why I'm living I, I will worship your one minute I want you to shake the person beside you tell the person you are welcome I love you with the love of the Lord I love you
says that they that believe in God shall not be ashamed and that is our song this morning he says that amen shall we please be seated I'm sorry amen They that trust in God shall not be ashamed. Their strength will be renewed from day to day. They shall enter into the goodness of God. That is a song this morning.
hallelujah. I thought you were going to push your hands together for the Lord and what the Lord is doing in our lives. Aposa. We are not in the room. Aposa. We thank God for Aposa Camp Meeting and Professional Summit 2023. Your best say, Yeah, your person, you tea a year, say, Mono, I will key Casemono. Sir, me, oh, me means, sir, Ben Coom, so which river. Oh, I say, would ye, on your mean, Sam, I will key Casemon about you. Now, what sorry, answer now, you better than in the air. Or be my own, your mean, Sam, no Eddie, now I call a chirho. Send your bear, yeah, come bro for a hat, now will be so a chirchimo. I'm away to me at Yasia. Oh, Wanka, Amen. You want to invite Pastor Enoch Atutodu to give us his presentation. Let's give him a round of applause as he comes. Praise God. Apusa. Kind of presentation, sir. I'm here to introduce uh, some of our very cherished members of this camp meeting and summit to us. I believe we are all important and we all need to be introduced, but for want of time and for space, let us acknowledge a few people that we have here. I want to specially acknowledge all of us. So if there is somebody sitting next to you, just welcome the person this morning. Just welcome the person with a smile, with a handshake. I think a handshake is in order with a smile. Um, welcome the person. Uh, all Dickens and Dicknesses in the house, can you give us a wave? Dickens and Dicknesses, give us a wave. God bless you for coming. You are most welcome. All Ascension Ministers' wives, Ascension Ministers' wives, area ladies, district ladies, all ladies, campus ladies, uh, international ladies, and all the ladies. Push your hands together for them. They are the pastors of our pastors and the apostles of our apostles. They pastor us in the house, and then we come and pastor you in church. Amen. Amen. We have in the house, I believe, Elder Professor Ebenezer Annan, Associate Professor of the Department of Material Science, University of Ghana. Push your hands together for Elder. He is with the Fafraha Assembly. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. We also have in the house Elder Dr. Franklin Asamwaba, the APN National Coordinator. Do it better for him. Do it better for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. All the way from Nigeria, we have in the house Pastor Isaiah Bassi. Isaiah Bassi. Akokwa District, Maritime Territory. You are welcome. You are most welcome. We have in this gathering Pastor Emmanuel Ni Adute Akwe, area superintendent, Teshinungwa area. The Lord is here. We also have the director of admin at the general headquarters, my own boss, Pastor Dr. Ebenezer Jamra. Receive him. Receive him. Let me take my time with this one. We have the director of ministries, movements, fellowships, associations, and recognized groups in the church. Pastor Ernest Kweku Watin. Do it better for him. Do it longer for him. 
He's in charge of all the groups. Akasabo for Kahun. Amen. It's a recognized group. We have the leader or the head of the campus ministry secretariat and the person of, let me take my time here again, Pastor Professor Alexander Kwesi J. Edwards. Put your hands together for him. The first president of APOSA. I heard about him, Pastor Edwards, Pastor Edwards, Pastor Edwards. My first camp meeting, I will tell you the year when I heard Pastor Edwards was coming, Pastor Edwards was coming. And then he came. I was shocked in two ways. Uh, but I won't tell you what my shock was. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, there are inequalities in life. Inequalities in life. Yes. We have another boss of mine, an apostle in the body, executive member of this church, the superintendent, no, the leader of the National Youth Ministry and the apostle of Tema C5 District. Apostle Andrews Okweteria Norte. Give it to him, give it to him. We have a lot in common. We all did mechanical engineering here. And we are all married to Elizabeth. Now that his gray hair has started coming, we also have gray hair in common. Push your hands together for him. <laughs> we have my daddy, my father, my papa, who was in Asafu district when we came here, KNUSD. Very good to us. And uh, has been consistent over the years with Aposa, the Tema Area Superintendent, Apostle Daniel Agbete. Receive him with a clap offering. Receive him, receive him. Then we have in this house one wonderful lady who has been with this vision from inception to date, who has been through it all. I don't know whether I told her before, but she is the person who made me stay in the apostolic church. I was on my way out in the final year when they came for our live service. I don't remember what apostle preached that day because I was already out of the church. But she spoke to us after the close of the service. And she said, everything in this church, this our church, will try to push you out. But stay there. And that stayed with me. And I have stayed here. The first lady of the Apostolic Church Ghana. And the diaspora. Worldwide. First lady, Josephine. Dokia Amina, receiver, Mommy Joe for short. Church, we are privileged. In the history of Aposa, this is the first president that comes from inception to completion. Anytime we have come meeting, the presidents come on the final day to come and do as you go. This president comes to do as you come, as you stay, and as you go. <laughs> One of the founding fathers of this vision on the campus of KNUST and currently, the president of the Apostolic Church Ghana and the Diaspora. Let's receive Apostle Dr. Aaron Nate. 
Kwesi Amina. <laughs> give it to him, give it to him. You are most welcome. Apostle, Doctor, President. We are glad to have you. From inception to completion. From as you come, as you stay, to as you go. Hallelujah. We want to know a little about the speaker for this morning. Who will take us through the main talk for day two. He's a minister of the gospel, product of KNUST. In fact, he was two years my president when I was on campus. So he was my president for so long, and we have done a lot together. I wonder why I should introduce him. I pray for grace that I will reveal certain things that should not be revealed. <laughs> he qualified as a computer scientist from this institution. He is a certified information systems auditor and is currently pursuing an MA at the Trinity Theological Seminary, Lagon. He has worked as the Regional Systems and Technology Specialist at ACDI and a Senior Revenue Assurance Analyst at Vodafone. He's been a Revenue Assurance Analyst at Tigo. Because it is a professional summit, you will need to know these things that some of us have learned and done and decide to put them aside and carry Bible and preach. Because there is life in the word of God. He has been the Kaneshi area witness leader and the president of Aposa KNUST between 2002 and 2004. So you see he served for two terms and two years as president. In fact, when we came and I was told that he is in the second year, I came to first year, I was told he was in second year, I was shocked because he was too mature to be that close <laughs> to me. He led us in missions and we didn't restrict ourselves to the environs of Kumasi and the Ashanti region, but this man made us go to be and we are going to be let's go to Brekum, Sunyai, places that when they call us or they are looking for us, they can easily get a car and come and find us. But we'll go to Kenyasi and Kasapin beyond Mim just for missions. And God rewarded us. Yes, I'll be careful. I will give you a testimony of a miracle that happened. He led us to buy a bus on KNUSD campus. And so I nicknamed him the bus president because when he got to Legon as campus ministry pastor too, they have bought a bus. <laughs> and the KNUSD bus, I was the first driver. And my testimony is about the bus, so I'll tell you another time. Because he says I should be careful, he is married to Lady Dr. Samira Saki. I first met her during our missions in Kenya. Me, I first met her there. They are blessed with two sons, Robert and Jason. 
He is a football fan and a Chelsea supporter. Church of God, let us rise and receive the ministration of Pastor Robert. Ni Aponsa Saki. Hallelujah. Please shall we humbly be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody offered to introduce me and I resisted. I said Enoch should do it. In fact, I regretted I did that. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the exciting news is that as we work for the Lord, the Lord takes care of us. Hallelujah. This morning, we give glory to God, and I want to salute all our fathers in the house. Shall we please push our hands together? Let's celebrate all our fathers, our president, Prof. Prof. Edwards, everyone who is here. God bless you so much. Let's celebrate our mommy as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a great privilege to stand here this morning to share the word of the Lord. Amen. There's a prayer that a brother prayed for me some few months ago. I had the privilege to go and minister at C5 one Sunday morning. In fact, I was there waiting for the service to start and president walks in to the vestry. I thought he was passing by, but he said he had come to church. Now the speaker for the day. Then one brother said, I said, the moment I saw president, I started praying for you. <laughs> so tell your neighbor, please pray for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because these are great men and women of God whose feet we have sat under for years. And there's one statement I remember with our president. He says, whatsoever is born of the Lord overcomes the world. And that word has always been with me. Hallelujah. And this morning, I'm trusting God that God will reveal himself to us in a very special way. Yesterday was powerful. Apostle Landy was powerful yesterday. Hallelujah. And this morning, I'm supposed to be talking about understanding the times. Understanding the times. Understanding the times. I want to humbly request of you to bow down your head shortly and talk to God. I don't know what you want from God this morning, but speak to your father. I don't know what that woman with the issue of blood heard but the Bible says she said to herself I don't know what announcement they gave her but she had a certain information and she said to herself if what perhaps I've heard is what it is and if I can only touch the hem of his garment can you lift up your voice child of God and speak to your father that father speak to me Lord For I walk in this world, there is a we call so high. Oh, laddy, can you make this your prayer this morning?
are grateful this morning. Father God, let these ancient words come to us this morning. Let this impart our lives, O oh God. Give us a lot of Father God, resilience, O oh God, for the times in which we live in. Do in our lives this morning that which only you, God, can do so that no man will take the glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to start from our theme scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to read from the verse number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. The Bible says that, For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field. You are God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. This particular scripture came as a result of a certain division that was trying to start in the church. What the Bible said that some of the people in Corinth were saying that we belong to Paul. Others said we belong to Apollos. And when Paul was trying to address them and settle the issue, he told them that he, Paul, sowed the seed. Apollos watered the seed. But the increase came from God. Then he went on to say that then neither the sower nor the one who watered matters but God. And he continued to tell them that myself and Apollos and perhaps the other church leaders, we are co-workers in God's vineyard. But you are the building of God. Then he goes ahead to introduce himself as a wise builder. And as a wise builder, my expectation is to see a man building a house from foundation to the roofing level. But he said, according to the grace that God has given me, I only laid a foundation. Wise builder, you have to come to a place that you have not been called to come and do everything. You do according to the grace that God has given to you. I cannot do it your way because I don't have that grace. So wise builders don't engage in competitions because we are here and we have received various measures of grace and by the grace that God has made available to us, we lay foundations, we build upon it and we do other things. So can I tell you this morning that no matter which level you are today, there is a place for you. There is a place for you. The competition is not necessary. And Apostle Paul was very, very confident and so relaxed 
to talk about what others are doing on the foundation. In other words, this building process is not about me. It's not about my brother. It's about God. If it is not you, then it cannot be right. If it is you, then everything is fine. But if it is for your brother, your sister, then something didn't go well. But that is not what a wise builder does. They acknowledge the grace of God over their lives. They take advantage of the grace over their lives. And they do what is required of them to do. Praise God. Ask your neighbor, are you a wise builder? Please get a response. In this lecture hall, every question must be answered. <laughs> Hallelujah. Apostle Paul goes on to talk about the fact that we should be careful what we are building or how we are building on the foundation. So yesterday we established that no other foundation but Christ. But now we are looking at what we are putting on the foundation and for Apostle Paul to make this statement means that aside of the foundation, what you are putting on it is equally critical. Then he goes on to tell us about people using gold and silver and hay and all of that and the kind of results that they will get when the work passes through fire. Even at that stage of the building, Apostle Paul was thinking eternity. So wise builders as they build, when God becomes a focus, what they have in mind is eternity. Something of eternal value, something that God will be proud of. You know what in times like this we are building all manner of stuff and people are jumping and clapping their hands and giving us all the funds here and there but you'll be surprised that one day when we get there you realize that all the funds and everything was for nothing because at the end of the day the people giving the funds are not the people we are accountable to we are accountable to God Then in the other scripture for our team in Luke, the Bible talks about different conditions and circumstances coming against the building. The rain will come, the wind will come, the storm will come, and other things. These are nothing but threats to the stability of the building. Threats to the stability of the building. So as we talk about the threat to the stability of the building, and these threats that we are talking about, the rain will come at a certain time. At another time, the storm will come. At another time, the wind will come. Sometime they will decide to come together. That is when sometimes you are sitting there and you are asking God, why me? Have you asked that question before? My question to you, if it's not you, should it be me? No. But the emphasis here is that these things can come at different times and seasons. Sometimes they can come at a goal. So, it brings me to my topic of the fact that as we build as wise builders, 
years, one thing we must not lose sight of is the times in which we find ourselves. Is it a time of comfort? A time of sleeping? Or a time to keep our focus and to do something eternal, something of eternal value for the master? One familiar scripture that comes to mind when talking about the times and seasons is First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible says that of the sons of Issachar, who understood the times. They understood the times. To know what Israel can do. Is it in your Bible? To know what Israel feels like doing. Is that in your Bible? But to know what Israel ought to do. There is a plan. There is an expectation of the times from Israel. What it means is that time places a certain kind of demand on you and you can decide to ignore time but over time, time will prove you that I cannot be ignored like that. Time placed a demand on Israel. They knew what Israel ought to do at every point in time. So, child of God, in this life, and the Bible said that because of this attitude or because of this insight, they, they, were, they were at the command of their brethren. They were in charge. And it is curious to realize that among their brethren was a tribe of Levi, right? These were the priests. But the sons of Issachar still commanded everybody, including the tribe of Levi. Man of God, it is not enough to be a man of God. You must get deeper and get to know what God would have you do. That is what brings transformation. That is what brings change. That is what brings the impact that God wants to do. So we go to our anchor scripture that I'm going to focus on for the rest of the session in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. The Bible says that, so be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. Tell your neighbor, be careful how you live. Don't live like, can you say that one? I didn't say it. When I was young, I thought that when somebody says, don't be stupid or don't be a fool, I thought he has insulted you. Is it an insult? He said, don't be. It means that you are not, but maybe you are trying to. The Bible says that don't live as fools, but make as wise, making the most of the times. Because the days are evil. What has God done? What has God done? What has God done? Acts chapter 17, from verse 26. 28. We are looking at what God has done as far as time is concerned. The Bible says that out of one man he formed a nation. Is it in your Bible? Acts chapter 17. Out of one man or one blood he formed all nations. And the Bible said that he did two things for a purpose. Number one, he determined the times that every human being must be on the face of the earth. 
He determined it, pre-appointed. Number two, he determined the exact place where they must be upon the face of the earth. This one, you can't influence it. It's divine appointment. And the Bible said that he did this for two reasons. For one reason. So that men will seek God and find him. So the purpose of God for determining the times we should be here and the exact place we should inhabit upon the face of the earth is because God knows that it is in this time and in this place where we can search for him and we can find him. Every day you hear, I'm going for greener pastures. We to our shores here are green, oh. They are green. But what is your motivation for going for greener pastures? It must be motivated by divine purpose. Divine purpose. So it means that you and I are in a dispensation that God has determined. The times in which we are in, how does Bible refer to our time? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. How does the Bible refer to our time? The Bible says that in the days past. Tell someone the days past. So we have, we have notified that we have been brought here at such a time like this by God's design. Now we want to understand what Bible calls this time that you and I find ourselves. He said that God in time past spoke to us through the prophets. But in what days? In what days? In these last days is speaking to us through his son whom he appointed. So what is the name of the time in which you find yourself? It is called the last days. Are we good? The last days. The last days. Now we want to look at the things or the characteristics of the last days. Because our business this morning is to understand the times. One of the ways to understand time is the signs and the things that are happening around the time. So what are the characteristics of the times we are living in which we call the last days? From the scripture that we read, there are three things from Ephesians chapter 5. Bible says that Do not, be careful how you live, do not live like fools, but like those who are wise. Do you see yourself in this scripture? Do you see yourself in this scripture? It is called you, you are in this scripture. The second thing we find in this scripture is we find opportunity. Opportunity. And the last thing we find in this scripture is called evil days. These are threats. They are dangers. They are threats. They are dangers. But it's not enough. The Bible says that because you are here, the days are evil and there is opportunity, a response is required of you and I. Are you with me? A 
response is required from you and I. And it is our response to the time that makes us a wise or the other builder. Are we together? Opportunities, eh? Evil days are there, threats. But the Bible says that you are also there and a certain response is required of you. How you respond will determine whether you are wise or otherwise. Now, let's look at the evil days. The evil days. We are still trying to understand the times. We are saying the times were pre-appointed by God. We are saying that we didn't make any input into the time. And the Bible says that the times in which we live in, they are called the last days. And we have seen three characteristics of the time. The Bible says that the days are evil, but there are opportunities. And you are there, and the response is required of you. The Bible calls the days in which you and I live in, the Bible calls it dangerous days. Bible says that they are evil days. Tell somebody they are evil days. Tell somebody they are evil days. Bible says that they are dangerous times. What makes them dangerous? Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Chapter 3. We want to read from the verse 1 to 5. We are trying to understand our time. We are saying that there are three things we have found here. We are in our time. There are threats. They are evil in our time. And also there are opportunities. The Bible says that this know also that in what days, in what days, in what days, is the Bible talking about your days? Is it talking about your time? In the last days, dangerous times will come, perilous times will come. This is what our days look like. Men shall be lovers of themselves. You see, the Bible mentioned other things that men will do. Lovers of themselves, they will love money, they will blasphemous, they will be people who are proud, and all the other, other things. But you realize that I believe it's not for nothing that the Bible started with men shall be lovers of themselves. Because when men become lovers of themselves, what they do basically is that they take God out of the throne and they place themselves on the throne. They become lovers of themselves. They become self-centered. Life is about them and them alone. As long as I am okay, everybody can go to. And when they come to this point, it means that they love themselves more than they love God. Once you love yourself more than you love God, the other things will begin to follow. Because the love for yourself will begin to demand for other things. And the Bible says the first one it will demand is that you begin to become a lover of money. And the love of money is, is, is the root of all evil. We learned something some time ago at pastor's conference. 
And the statement was, sins are because sin is. And that is this one. Sins are because one particular sin exists. And that sin we are talking about is a sin where men have taken God out of the throne and they have placed themselves on the throne. Do you see the way why you love yourself the way you do? Ask your neighbor, do you see why you love yourself the way you do? Once the thing will cause you pain, it will not have a place in it with you. Once the thing will create discomfort, it cannot have a place with you. Once it doesn't make you satisfied personally, especially at the level of your flesh, you don't give in to it. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. So you are people who are in church, but God is not the Lord over their lives. They are in church. Because see, this was addressed to Timothy, okay? But God, Paul was bringing his attention to the fact that these are the things that will happen in the latter times. And when you continue, you realize that this was not meant for unbelievers. No. No. It was not meant for unbelievers. Because, see, when you look at the last verse, it says that they have a form of godliness. They look like they are godly. They are in church. They sing in the choir. Some of them even preach behind the pulpit. But they are lovers of themselves. Bible said they love pleasure more than they love God. Pleasure. When you put a soap opera alongside an evening teaching service, should I continue? Pleasure. Pleasure. And they, pastor, they love pleasure more than God. These are the last days, according to scripture. We are trying to understand the times in which we live in. Then the next scripture talks about another interesting thing. Very interesting thing. Can we go to that scripture, please? Second Timothy. Chapter 4. We are trying to diagnose what our time looks like. The Bible said that a time will come men will not endure sound doctrine. Child of God, David said that your word is like honey. So it means that the word of God is sweet. Is that true or correct? Yeah, it's sweet. But there is a time you come to a place where you are receiving the word of God, what you are receiving is very good for your health, but it makes you so uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. Those are the days when you go and ask that, why never come one century pastor and all the other preach here? Have you heard it before? When you hear a man talk like that, 
It means that the word of God is becoming a knife that is cutting through things. But you know what? Bible says when it gets to that point, you are allowed not to enjoy it, but you must endure, endure, endure the word. Endure means that you allow the word space. It is painful, all right, but you are saying that this is the very thing that will make me whole. Like Peter told Jesus, Master, we have been fishing all night. Oh, but at your word, we want to give it a try. Again, at your word, we want to go through the pain again. At your word, we want to give it a shot again. The Bible says that in our days, men will not endure. You see, when they don't endure, it's because they are waiting to hear something specific. But my question is. If you know what you want to hear, why don't you tell it to yourself? Are you with me? You know what you want to hear. Why don't you tell it to yourself? But the Bible said they go another step further and they gather people unto themselves to tell them exactly what they want to hear. Apostle Andy told us, I see some pie idea. Remember, but you know one thing to that happens. Sometimes in these days, we don't go to heap for ourselves, people. We pick the word of God, and we force it to say what we want to say. We twist the word of God to tell us what we want to hear. I have a lecturer, he says that. Because see, the word of God is of age. Allow the word to speak for itself. Don't speak for the word. The word is of age. The Bible is of age. Allow the Bible to speak for itself. And so in today's time... People are looking for more revelation, but no obedience. More revelation. And the interesting thing is that when you go to the internet, you can get anything at all you want to get. In fact, if you are looking for a sermon to preach, you can get it. You can listen to it over and over and over and come and recite it to your members. Or see, Revi, Revi, Revi. That's what they call it on campus. Obviously, Revi, Revi, Revi. This is our time. So when you come to a place as a child of God and you are not enduring sound doctrine, you are only fulfilling scripture. It is prophetic. That in the last days, these things will happen. But as a wise builder, it is not every prophecy in scripture that you must allow to be fulfilled in your life. Because some of the things there are not things that God wants us to walk in. But he's giving us indications of things that will happen. Sound doctrine. They will run away from it. But you know what? For some people, these threats, these dangers, these evil we are talking about can be ignored. But you know what, child of God? The fact that you ignore the danger does not mean the danger does not exist. Ignoring it does not change the fact that the danger is still there. So Proverbs 27, 12 says that the wise sees danger ahead and avoids it. But the fool keeps going and gets into trouble. If this 
dangers are there, these threats are there, as wise builders, it is required of us not to ignore them. And I said that acknowledgement of the dangers is not a lack of faith. It is wisdom. Acknowledging that there is danger there does not mean you are not a man of faith. According to scripture, you acknowledgement that the danger is there and making some effort to avoid it, it is called wisdom. You are walking with a brother. You know the things he's been telling you. You know the places he's been asking you to meet him. You know the kind of things he's doing. And you are walking. Every year. One of these days, I will change him. One of these days, I will convert him. And you are just walking and walking and walking until you end up in the ditch. When it happens like that, the Bible says that you are, you are, I didn't say it. The wise sees danger and they avoid it. Hallelujah. Can we look at 1 Timothy 4, 1, one more threat, and then we'll go to the opportunities. Quickly, please. 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Bible says that the Spirit says expressly, no confusion, no ambiguity, very clear. That in the last days, look at what will happen. People will depart from the faith. What are they doing? They are changing their foundation. They don't, they are not just building wrongly on the already laid foundation. They are actually changing the foundation. They are departing from the faith. And when they depart, see what happens to them. Deceiving spirits. Hmm? And the Bible said there are doctrines that are called the doctrine of Demons. Demons can teach. Tell your neighbor, demons can teach. Yeah. And they will teach you and say that when you listen to them, you say, ah, this is revelation. Yeah. Then you stand like this. Then you walk close to them. Then, mm, 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 mm. Then when you come to church, your pastor preaches, or see your pastor, and then they are young Doctrine of demons. One happened in the Bible where some men came and said that the resurrection has already taken place. And the Bible said because they said all of those things, they discouraged a lot of the believers. That is the doctrine of demons. They will discourage you. These are the times. But this morning, child of God, I have good news for you. Oh, I said that I have good news for you. The days are evil. The days are dangerous. The days are evil. There's so many things going on wrong in our days. But when you read scripture, in Acts chapter 2 verse 17, Bible said, in the last days, in the last days, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So even as there are 
evil and there are threats and dangers, the Bible says that in the same last days, anybody that aligns yourself, I'm about to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions. Evil days, but opportunities abound. Opportunities abound. I will pour out my spirit. Are there sons and daughters in this house? Are, are there sons and daughters in this house? Then I came to announce to you that if we are in the last days, then the word of the Lord says that I will pour out. Pour out. Let the devil do his worst. An army of God is rising up. Ah, an army of God is rising up. Opportunity in the evil days. Opportunity. John 16 13. He said that. In when the spirit of truth has come, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. He will lead you. He will teach you. He will lead you into all truth. The son of God, in these days of evil and the doctrine of demons and all of these things, God is also very active in these last days. I said, my God, your God is also active in these last days. God is waiting for a man for the eyes of the Lord are moving to and fro upon the face of the earth looking for a man whose heart is right with him that he, God, will show himself strong on behalf of the man. The eyes of the Lord are moving to and fro. Today they don't know you, but stay there. I said, today they don't know you, but stay there. I said, stay there. Stay in that place of prayer. Opportunities. 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 Then Jesus said, John 14, 12. Matthew 14, 12, sorry. He said that those that believe in me. <laughs> oh, those that believe in me. The worst I do, they will do also. And not just the worst I do, but greater worst also, they shall do. Opportunity. The last days are days of greater worst. That as the army of the enemy is moving, the army of God will take their rightful place and encounter them. So we've seen the evil. We've seen the threat, the dangers. We've seen the opportunities. Now what is required of us is a response. From our theme scripture, I mean our anchor scripture. Be careful how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of the time. Because the days are evil. Then he goes in verse 70 to say, understanding try to understand the will of God so the response very simple make the most out of the time take advantage of the move of God in these last days align yourself and allow God to do something great and mighty with your life And in trying to make the most out of all of this, Paul told Timothy something. He said that, Timothy, train yourself unto godliness. People shall be ungodly, but I encourage and admonish you that train yourself unto godliness. Train yourself unto godliness. I want to touch on two, three things. About this, and then we we'll enter into a time of prayer. Tell somebody, give God a good response. 
Tell somebody, make the most of the times. The times are evil. There is danger here. Ah, but God is also on the move. Ah, God is also on the move. To become godly, Paul says that you have to train yourself to be godly. Because your flesh, my flesh, under normal circumstances, will not be godly. Do you remember the day you wake up and there's no fasting in mind and you can walk through the whole day not eating anything? You feel fine. But the night you told yourself, tomorrow, then you wake up in the morning, when we're on campus, you'll be there. Then when you wake up in the morning, you hear, tea, bread, raw, nabo. Fresh tea, bread. And they know you are a regular customer. So when they are saying fresh tea bread, then they are at your door. They are waiting for you to open the door. But the Bible says that you must train yourself to be godly. Training is talking about exercise. There is pain. There is endurance. There is intentionality. You don't become godly on autopilot. You become godly by being very intentional. So Paul says that train yourself to be godly. How do you train yourself to be godly? There are basic things we know. Number one, the place of prayer. The place of prayer. You see, and this kind of prayer is not the prayer where you go to God and it's like, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. But there's a prayer in Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. Apostle Paul said, I don't stop, I will not stop praying for you. Until I see Christ is formed inside of you. Until I look at you and I can see Christ inside of you, I will stop praying. Can somebody get up one day and go to God and say, that, Father, I am here. Until I see the image of your son inside of me, Father, I am not leaving this place. Then in Colossians about 4 verse 12, you hear about Epaphras praying. And Paul said, I bring you greetings from one of you. It's called Epaphras. He said that he is continually making and laboring for you in prayer. The man is not just praying, he's laboring in prayer and the prayer topic is that God, let them stand perfect in your will. Let them walk perfect in your will. Let them do what you want them to do. Let them walk perfect in your will. It is not God, give me, give me, give me. It is God, I want to be more like you. And when you become more like him, you will realize that in this kingdom that we find ourselves, child of God, things are not just given. Things are added. I said things are not just given, things are added. So when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, every other thing that you need will be added unto you. For those of you who don't like going for missions, I encourage you go for missions. You'll be amazed at what the Lord will do through missions. In fact, I'm a living testimony. 
to be continued. Hallelujah. Number two. Discipline with the word. Discipline with the word. Can you imagine Jesus? The word of God. Goes to the wilderness. The devil comes to tempt him. And the Bible said that Jesus said it is written. written. The word of God needed the word to prevail. The very word of God needed the word to prevail. Study the word. Meditate upon the word. And child of God, godliness is not a one day event. It's a process. It's a process. Exercise yourself. So Hebrews 5.14 will tell you that there are some people who through the use they have exercised themselves to distinguish between good and evil. When you don't exercise yourself, when you see the doctrine of demons, you cannot. Because the doctrine of demons, sometimes they are not so straightforward. They can tell all the truth. One lies somewhere and you are gone. But when you have exercised yourself to be able to distinguish between good and evil, when you see the doctrine of demons, you can say that this is the doctrine of demons. And finally, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4, the verse number 1. Bible said, and Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, not Jesus, half of the Holy Ghost, he was full of the Holy Ghost. And the man full of the Holy Ghost was led by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness. What is a man full of the Holy Ghost doing in the wilderness? Before that incident, the Bible said that he was baptized in Jordan. And the heavens were opened. And God said, this is my beloved son. In him I am well pleased. If I get this kind of announcement, you will not see me in the wilderness. You can imagine the billboard. Can you give me the name of my church? The, 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 the only certified. And no crap, sir. And the billboards will be everywhere. But even after that announcement. And the Holy Ghost coming and filling him. The Bible said that he went to the wilderness. Not to go and have fun. But for 40 days, 40 nights, he was fasting. A man full of the Holy Ghost. With such an announcement. Fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. What are you looking for? But Luke chapter 4, verse 16 will tell you and Jesus after 40 days and 40 nights he returned from the wilderness in the power of the Holy Ghost and the Bible said news about him went everywhere no social media no Joy FM no Adam FM none of this thing but when the man was coming out the Bible said that news of him went everywhere Father, in these last days, as we wait and spend time with you, Father, bring us to the place where we don't have to announce ourselves. Heaven will announce you. We are, we, are, we are trying to announce ourselves because we don't want to make room for God to work on us. But when God works on you, it doesn't matter where you are coming from. Heaven will announce you. call to godliness that is what we are going to pray for that father I want to respond to this call the days are evil but I see opportunities in the days and I see you also on the move so I just want to align myself for you to do with me what you want to do can you humbly rise on your feet as we enter into prayer Yesu kaya hu, e na 
Ache. Raya. Is your prayer this afternoon, this morning?
Second Timothy three five. Bible says there are some people close to you. They are your friends. They are the people. They are your body bodies. Bible says that they have a form of godliness, but they have denied the power thereof. It means that they look like Christian, but there's nothing Christian about their lives. And they know the life they are living is not Christian. But they are your best friends. The Bible said that for such people, he says that you must stay away from them. He says you must stay away from them. It's a difficult decision for some of you. Somebody, this is the one who has promised that he or she wants to marry you and be with you. Bible says that they have a form of godliness but they have denied the power thereof you are going to pray for grace to say no to certain relationships some may be very painful very difficult but the Bible said that because of the threats in these days you must stay away from them I must stay away from them I want to talk to God. Yes, you know you have to get away by the struggle. But this morning we are trusting God that grace will abound. Praise us, Lord. Uh, that energy will come from above. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. As I speak, brother, some names are coming to mind. You know where you started from and where they have brought you today. The Lord is calling on you that you must stay away from them. For evil communication corrupts good manners. It corrupts good manners. You can't tell me all your friends are unbelievers and we smokers and you tell me that evil communication corrupt good manners. This morning your prayer is that Father give me grace. I want to part away from this one. I want to stay away from this one. Can you lift up your voice everywhere and talk to God? You need grace to stay away from some people. You need grace to say no to some people. 
Lift up your voice and talk to God. A form of godliness. A form of godliness. Talk to the Lord. No matter how painful it is, the Lord is calling on you this morning. Stay away from them. Stay away from them. Stay away. Stay away from them. From we're asking God this morning for grace discipline with the word Discipline in the place of prayer. Discipline in allowing the Holy Ghost space in our lives. You are asking God, give me grace to exercise myself unto godliness by giving prayer a chance, giving your word a chance, and giving your spirit a chance in my life. The discipline to be in the place of prayer. You wake up in the morning, the whole day, you have not read the word of God, and everything is fine with you. There is something wrong. But Father, this morning, I am asking for the discipline. Talk to God, ask God, God, I need grace, 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 to be disciplined in the place of the world. Listen, child of God, we, 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 not, we are not going to pray into the microphone. You are going to make this personal, have this personal discussion with your father. If you can speak in a language, you'll understand. Lord, I want to be disciplined in the place of the word. I want to be disciplined in the place of prayer. I want to be able to yield fully to your spirit. So this morning, help me, God. Can you lift up your voice solemnly and pray this prayer? Solemnly talk to God. If you truly believe you need help, talk to your father this morning. Talk to your father this morning. Talk to your father this morning. A heart that is broken, the Lord will not reject. The Lord will not reject. If the people who are called by my name will, will humble themselves, will turn from their wicked ways, if they will cry unto me, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, I will bring healing to their land. Lord, heal me this morning. Lord, heal me this morning. 
Why I wake up the whole day, I'm not eating, and Father God, I look fine. Not one day, not two days, several days, but everything is okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can bring your prayer to a close. You remain silent. Allow your father to speak to you. is available this morning. We are grateful that help is available this morning. We are grateful that Father God the veils have been removed, God. We are grateful that Lord God Almighty, the things we struggle to do, as you give grace, we will be able to train ourselves, Lord, to be godly in these evil days that we find ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Our prayer is that, Father, that as we step out of this place, help us to be doers of your word, not hearers only, deceiving ourselves. We are grateful. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please kindly be on your feet for me. Kindly. Be. Oh, What can you close your eyes with me? Unyami tumu fo, unyami tumu fo. Oshe yeso da. Hey, what's up, Anke? No boy, Uba. Oba tampa, oba tampa. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can you hold the hands of somebody in this place? Can you hold the some hands of somebody? Wami Wami Radi Yes way. Yes, Lord. Wami, wami, radiyeswe. Rap, 
Bele Basaya do Bakamanda, Le Bele Bano Senna. From yesterday and today, one word is clear we cannot afford to fail. We don't have the excuse. We don't have the excuse. We don't have any excuse. In fact, I fear for every one of us here because we have heard these words. Because we could have been exonerated if we did not know. But now that we know, we can only ask for grace from God to help us to be doers of the word. Please open your eyes and watch me. If you draw, if you draw the graph of time, I was wondering, T will be on the horizontal axis. There is a point in that axis called today. There is a point in time called today. And the prophet said, today if you shall hear the word of God, do not harden your heart. Please close your eyes. Having heard the word of God, you know. You know that you are far away from him. You know that you are far away. You know that you are in the times. But Charlie, some things are happening in the times. It's like you are moving with the current of the times. Looks like the storms and the wind and the rain has beaten you. Lovers of pleasure, lovers of themselves, lovers of money enthroned money, self on the heart that God created for himself only please don't ever leave this camp without giving the throne back to whoever deserves it if you are here in this auditorium if you take stock of your life you realize that no no may I it's a showmanship. But you want to be genuine. It's not too late. You want to ask Jesus to come on the throne of your life. That will be one of the wisest decisions you can make today. In fact, the word says that if we hear the word and we do it, we are the wise. One of the things you will do today is to surrender your life to Jesus again. Jesus, to have your throne back to God. Kindly make this prayer with me. Or wherever you are, just lift your right hand. If you want to sincerely make this prayer to the Lord. You know you have drifted. You know you have derailed. But like the prodigal son, you want to come back to God tonight, this morning. Wherever in this auditorium, please lift your hands. And make this prayer after me. Say, Father, I thank you for your son. I believe you sent him for me. I acknowledge I have run life my own way. But today I acknowledge Jesus as Lord and the only capable savior of my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, Lord. Return, O oh God, to the throne of your hand. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Run my life, Lord, and help me to conform. In Jesus' name.
Father, I thank you for as many hearts that are yielded before you. As many as have decided to give themselves to you and to enthrone you back. I pray that, Lord, you help us navigate our paths along the paths of destiny and eternity. That glory will be yours. We will not be missing. You will say to us, good and faithful servants. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take your seat. If, if, you, just, if you just made the prayer, please, after the afternoon session, we will meet you right at where our MCs are sitting. So you will kindly make time, sincerely, and let's meet and have an interaction. I'm here for a different assignment this morning in addition to it. I want to announce to you that the theme for this camp meeting is still a wise builder. Apostle President, I was invited to a certain church to preach. After preaching, they prepared an honorarium. And from hindsight, I realized that there were a lot of contentions about the honorarium, how much to give. Not tea bread from Asuchano. We must treat money as a material to be used in this building process. 
it is not the master. So the caution is that in treating money as a material, make sure you don't use cheap, inferior, or fake material to build. Because the landlord will eventually hand over the building you have built back to you someday. And you don't want to tell, ah, if I knew you were going to give me the building, I would have used, um, I would have used that ceiling thing. What is it? Instead of T and J, or instead of using plywood for, uh, for you use POP. If I knew you were going to give the building, I would have used chandeliers. I would have gotten big space. By now you don't know, but I'm telling you, it will come back. So use expensive materials. Don't use cheap materials. There shall be a change of ownership. The building will eventually be given to you. I believe Solomon was described as a wise builder. And Solomon was described as wise because he used quality and expensive materials in the building of the house of God. Gold. And I believe that if David was in this camp meeting, like you are, in 2nd Samuel chapter 24, verse 24, if David was here, he would have said, Rather than telling Anuwa that I will, I will take the gift free, he said no. I say he would have said, I wouldn't build with any material that would not cost me. I'll give a costly sacrifice. I know already you have done well by paying 350, 400, unprecedented in the history of come meeting to come. You have done well. In fact, even your transportation, I know it is tough. You have done well. But let's come up here. Let's go up to the mountains and gather more quality woods to build the house of God. I'm saying, enough of the one Ghana, the two Ghana. If that is what you have, fine. But take an expensive gift. I know some of us came with one Ghana here, two Ghana here, five Ghana here. for the apostolic church let's be on our feet as APWT leaders for our offertory God bless you something big something bigger than what you gave yesterday something better something nice we will love the foreign currencies the dollars and the euros and the pounds and the hundreds and the two hundreds and the three hundreds. God bless you. Jesus, can you be on our feet? Awesome God, mighty God, mighty God.
General Headquarters presents a post camp meeting and apostolic professional summit 2023. Theme a wise builder from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, and Luke chapter 6, verse 47 to 49. Date from Friday 22nd to Tuesday 26th December 2023. Amen. Venue, University of Science and Technology, KNEST, Kumasi, and speakers, Apostle Dr. Aaron Amina, President, the Apostolic Church Ghana, Apostle Andrew Snotty, National Youth Ministry Leader, Pastor Robert Saki, Campus Ministry Pastor.